Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Michigan City Public Library podcast. I'm Miss Dana, your host, and today we will be featuring some new and unforgettable biographies. These will all be found in the adult section, but we do have a biography collection for kids, too. Before we get into the books, let's talk about the upcoming library events. On Friday, August 26th at 2 p.m., join us for a movie. Death on the Nile is about Belgian sleuth Hercules Poirot. His Egyptian vacation aboard a glamorous river steamer turns into a terrifying search for a murderer when a picture-perfect couple's idyllic honeymoon is tragically cut short. It's rated PG-13. Needle Arts Club is now on Thursdays at their normal time of 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. The club promotes all forms of needle arts. Membership is open to anyone interested in needle arts such as crochet, needlepoint, cross-stitch, crewel, tatting, and other hand-stitching. All skill levels and ages are welcome. An exchange of skills and materials is encouraged. In addition, the group has organized a local chapter of Warm Up America. Volunteers are knitting and crocheting handmade squares 7 by 9 inches, which will be joined together to make a full-size afghan. The program is open to all ages and skill levels, and if you are interested in contributing, you can join the group or call Jessica at the library for information on how you can become a joiner. For kids, all through September, stop in and enjoy a Pokemon scavenger hunt. Find Pokemon throughout the youth services and gotta catch them all for a small prize. On Monday, September 12th from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. Join us for a Mario Kart tournament. Registration is required on our website. Go head-to-head in a Mario Kart race and the winner gets a GameStop gift card and runner-ups also get small prizes. We are still doing take-home crafts for kids and teens. Stop by the Youth Services desk every week for a new craft. Our genre feature for this month is biographies. We have a well-curated collection of adult biographies, as well as a large selection of juvenile biographies. It's always interesting to learn more about figures in history, as well as people who went through similar experiences to what you're going through right now. First for biographies is Always Remember Your Name, A True Story of Family and Survival in Auschwitz by Andra and Tatiana Bucci. A haunting World War II memoir of two sisters who survived Auschwitz that picks up where Anne Frank's diary left off and gives voices to the children we lost. On March 28, 1944, six-year-old Tati and her four-year-old sister Andra were roused from their sleep and arrested. Along with their mother Mira, their aunt, and cousin Sergio, they were deported to Auschwitz. Over 230,000 children were deported to the camp where Joseph Mengele, the angel of death, performed deadly experiments on them. Only a few dozen children survived, Tati and Andra among them. Tati, Andra, and Sergio were separated from their mothers upon arrival, but Mira was determined to keep track of her girls. After being tattooed with their inmate numbers, she made them memorize her number and told them to always remember your name. In keeping this promise to their mother, the sisters were able to be reunited with their parents when World War II ended. An unforgettable narrative of the power of sisterhood in the most extreme circumstances and of how a mother's love can overcome the most impossible odds, the Bucci sisters' memoir is a timely reminder that separating families is an inexcusable evil. You can find Always Remember Your Name in the adult biography display area under Bucci Andra. Next is Never Give Up. My Life in the Wild by Bear Grylls. Admired by millions as the star of Man vs. Wild and the acclaimed NGC series Running Wild, global adventurer Bear Grylls has explored places few would dare to go. Now he shares time-honored lessons for leading an adventurous life through stories drawn from his personal experiences, as well as encounters with a diverse group of celebrities who have participated in his wildly popular television shows. In these inspiring pages, Grills chronicles his life since stepping onto the small screen, taking readers on his most famous adventures, sharing stories from his favorite expeditions, and capturing his hairiest survival challenges. 
The follow-up to the internationally best-selling Mud, Sweat, and Tears, this new autobiography goes behind the scenes of on infamous Man vs. Wild shoots and provides an insight into what it's really like to run wild. With guests including President Obama, Roger Federer, and Julia Roberts. Along the way, Bear explores the valuable lessons he's learned in the wild, opens up about his most personal challenges and achievements, and the enduring importance of courage, kindness, and resilience. Written for outdoor enthusiasts and armchair adventurers alike, Never Give Up offers an inspiring path to help readers live their best lives. You can find Never Give Up in the adult biography display area under Grills Bear. Next is Most Dope, The Extraordinary Life of Mac Miller by Paul Cantor. Malcolm James McCormick was born on January 19, 1992. By the age of six, he was playing piano, guitar, drums, and bass, and by 15, he had released his first mixtape under the name Easy Mac. A career soon followed, bringing him a record deal with the independent label Rostam Records and projects with Wiz Khalifa, XXL, Kendrick Lamar, and Meek Mill. Despite the success and accolades that would follow over the next eight years, Miller was continually plagued by his struggles with substance abuse and depression, which ultimately led to his untimely death from an accidental overdose in 2018. Most Dope offers a comprehensive look at the life of a musician whose legacy of unparalleled creativity and diverse collaboration still echoes in recording studios and arenas today. You can find Most Dope in the Adult Biography Display Area under Miller Mac. Next is The Rise, Kobe Bryant and the Pursuit of Immortality by Mike Sileski. Kobe Bryant's death in January 2020 did more than rattle the worlds of sports and celebrity. The tragedy of that helicopter crash, which also took the life of his daughter Gianna, unveiled the full breadth and depth of his influence on our culture and by tracing and telling the oft-forgotten and lesser-known story of his early life, The Rise promises to provide an insight into Kobe that no other analysis has. In the rise, readers will travel from the neighborhood streets of southwest Philadelphia, where Kobe's father, Joe, became a local basketball standout, to the Bryant family's isolation in Italy, where Kobe spent his formative years, to the leafy suburbs of Lower Marion, where Kobe's legend was born. The story will trace his career and life at Lower Marion as he led the Aces to the 1995-96 Pennsylvania State Championship, a dramatic underdog run for a team with just one star player, and the run-up to the 1996 NBA draft where Kobe's dream of playing pro basketball culminated in his acquisition by the Los Angeles Lakers. In researching and writing The Rise, Mike Seleski has a terrific advantage over other writers who have attempted to chronicle Kobe's life. Access to a series of never-before-released interviews with him during his senior season and early days in the NBA. For a quarter century, these tapes and transcripts preserved Kobe's thoughts, dreams, and goals from his teenage years, and they contained insights into and told stories about him that have never been revealed before. This is more than a basketball book. This is an exploration of the identity and making of an icon and the effect of his development on those around him, the essence of a man before he truly became a man. You can find the rise in the adult biography display area under Bryant Kobe. Next is Harriet Tubman, A Life in American History by Carrie Walters. Harriet Tubman served a pivotal role in leading slaves to freedom in the decade before the Civil War. This biography offers a demythologized chronicle of her life and work, providing information about her life as a slave, role as conductor on the Underground Railroad, work as a military scout during the Civil War, and post-war activism for blacks and women. Harriet Tubman, A Life in American History, provides valuable context that situates Harriet Tubman against the backdrop of the slavery debate in antebellum America and the hardships endured by ex-slaves in postbellum America. 
As such, the time frame covers nearly a full century from the first quarter of the 19th to the first quarter of the 20th. In addition to 10 biographical chapters and a short timeline, Harriet Tubman includes an interpretive essay reflecting on Tubman's importance in American history, an appendix of primary documents about Tubman's life and work, a bibliography, and a number of sidebars and short commentaries embedded in the text that invite readers to explore connections between Tubman's life and political, intellectual, and social culture. You can find Harriet Tubman in the adult biography section under Tubman, Harriet. Next is Didn't We Almost Have It All in Defense of Whitney Houston by Garrick Kennedy. On February 11, 2012, Whitney Houston was found submerged in the bathtub of her suite at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. In the decades since, the world has mourned her death amid new revelations about her relationship to her blackness, her sexuality, and her addictions. Didn't We Almost Have It All is author Garrick Kennedy's exploration of the duality of Whitney's life as both a woman in the spotlight and someone who often had to hide who she was. In this story of Whitney's life, her whole life, told with both grace and honesty, Kennedy deftly peels back the layers of Whitney's complex story to get to the truth at the core of what drove her, what inspired her, and what haunted her. He pulls the narrative apart into key elements that informed her life growing up in the famed Drinkard family, the two romantic relationships that shaped the entirety of her adult life with Robin Crawford and Bobby Brown, her fraught relationship to her own blackness and the ways in which she was judged by the black community, her drug and alcohol addiction, and finally the shame that she carried in her heart, which informed every facet of her life. Drawing on hundreds of sources, Kennedy takes readers back to a world in which someone like Whitney simply could not be and explains in excruciating detail the ways in which her fame did not and could not protect her. In the time since her passing, the world and the way we view celebrities has changed dramatically. A sweeping look at Whitney's life, Didn't We Almost Have It All, contextualizes her struggles against the backdrop of tabloid culture, audience consumption, mental health stigmas, and racial divisions in America. It explores exactly how and why we lost a beloved icon far too soon. You can find Didn't We Almost Have It All in the adult biography section under Houston Whitney. Next is We Were Dreamers, an immigrant superhero origin story by Simu Liu. The star of Marvel's first Asian superhero film, Shang-Chi, tells his own origin story of being a Chinese immigrant, his battles with cultural stereotypes and his own identity, becoming a TV star, and landing the role of a lifetime. In this honest, inspiring, and relatable memoir, newly minted superhero Simu Liu chronicles his family's journey from China to the bright lights of Hollywood with razor-sharp wit and humor. As Simu grows up, he plays the part of the pious child flawlessly. He gets straight A's, crushes national math competitions, and makes his parents proud. But as time passes, he grows increasingly disillusioned with the path that's been laid out for him. Less than a year out of college at the tender age of 22, his life hits rock bottom when he is laid off from his first job as an accountant. Left to his own devices and with nothing left to lose, Simu embarks on a journey that will take him far outside his comfort zone into the world of show business. Through a swath of rejection and comical mishaps, Simu's determination to carve out a path for himself leads him not only to succeed as an actor, but also to open the door to reconciling with his parents. We Were Dreamers is more than a celebrity memoir. It's a story about growing up between cultures, finding your family, and becoming the master of your own extraordinary circumstances. You can find We Were Dreamers in the adult biography display area under Liu Simu. Next is one of my personal favorite biographies, Furiously Happy, a funny book about horrible things by Jenny Lawson. As Jenny says, 
Some people might think that being furiously happy is just an excuse to be stupid and irresponsible and invite a herd of kangaroos over to your house without telling your husband first because he would suspect that he would say no since he's never particularly liked kangaroos. And that would be ridiculous because no one would invite a herd of kangaroos into their house. Two is the limit. I speak from personal experience. My husband says that none is the new limit. He says I should have been clearer about that before I rented all those kangaroos. Most of my favorite people are dangerously effed up, but you never guess because we've learned to bear it so honestly that it becomes the new normal. Like John Hughes wrote in The Breakfast Club, we're all pretty bizarre. Some of us are just better at hiding it. Except go back and cross out the word hiding. Fiercely happy is about... Taking those moments when things are fine and making them amazing because those moments are what makes us who we are, and they're the same moments we take into battle with us when our brains declare war on our very existence. It's the difference between surviving life and living life. It's the difference between taking a shower and teaching your monkey butler how to shampoo your hair. It's the difference between being sane and being furiously happy. You can find Furiously Happy in the adult biography section under Lawson, Jenny. And finally, we have Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zauner. In this exquisite story of family, food, grief, and endurance, Michelle Zauner proves herself far more than a dazzling singer, songwriter, and guitarist. With humor and heart, she tells of growing up as one of the few Asian American kids at her school in Eugene, Oregon, of struggling with her mother's particular high expectations of her, of a painful adolescence, of treasured months spent in her grandmother's tiny apartment in Seoul, where she and her mother would bond late at night over heaping plates of food. As she grew up, moving to the East Coast for college, finding work in the restaurant industry and performing gigs with her fledgling band, and meeting the man who would become her husband, her Koreanness began to feel ever more distant, even as she found the life she wanted to live. It was her mother's diagnosis of terminal cancer when Michelle was 25 that forced a reckoning with her identity and brought her to reclaim the gifts of taste, language, and history her mother had given her. Vivacious and plain-spoken, lyrical and honest, Zauner's voice is as radiantly alive on the page as it is on stage, rich with intimate anecdotes that will resonate widely and complete with family photos, Crying in H Mart is a book to cherish, share, and reread. You can find Crying in H Mart in the adult biography display area under Zauner Michelle. Hopefully you will find something you're interested in and check out. There are so many more people and stories in the library that there's sure to be something for everyone. Until next time, hopefully we'll see you in the library soon. Bye!